This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thank you for joining us, Moses. Covering a different Bobcats club tonight. Just as important, Bob. Yep. Yeah, yep. They, I don't know what you call them, the mini Bobcats. <laughs> uh, I don't know the mini cats. We'll but no, go with Baker Hughes. You bet. Uh, <laughs> they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, this great second half push they've made for the playoffs. We'll have more on that in sports. And it's a really good story, too, as well. For and sure. Gerard, <laughs> we are expecting some snow. Yeah, we're expecting <laughs> a little dusting from old man winter. Actually, we had a, just a teeny weeny bit just at around quarter to two thereabouts this afternoon. It was, <laughs> I guess, part of all that cold wind that was coming in. Yeah, a few folks did tell me it did feel a bit nippy out there. Let's see what we've got right about mm -hmm. now because we're at minus six. We actually got to our high temperature today of a minus five, just at around three in the afternoon. And as minus five was the high as well for Coal Lake and area, minus four in the Battlefords. Across the region, we're witnessing a buildup of cloud cover. We've already seen a dusting in Cold Lake and area, and that has held off for the time being, but running a 60% chance of seeing some more before it's all done. Details of all of that, as well as we got some wind to contend with later on this evening. Details of all of that a little later in the cast. MLA Lloyd Snellgrove has received a lot of attention as of late, and today was no different. It was announced late this morning Snellgrove has resigned from the PC party. Chief of Staff Stephen Carter made the announcement on Twitter. It is unclear whether Snellgrove made the decision himself. We were unable to reach him for comment. Meantime, there was no sign of Snellgrove's sharp exit from the PC party at last night's Vermilion Lloydminster Conservative nomination. The spotlight was solely on newcomer Richard Starkey. And to make it official, I accept the nomination of the Vermilion Lloydminster PC Association to be your candidate in the next provincial election. In front of a crowd of over 150 supporters, Richard Starkey happily accepted his newfound title. You know, I, I was able to speak tonight sort of from the heart and talk about a lot of things that are important to me. Starkey ran uncontested for the PC spot, left vacant by long-standing MLA Lloyd Snellgrove. Truly, change is uh, probably one of the most critical things to, uh, to success uh, in politics or uh, just about in any business where, where things are changing. In conservative country, political change is something this region hasn't seen much, with Snellgrove securing his spot in caucus for the past 11 years. But on the home front, Starkey says change is what he's after, at least in terms of governing. The riding had a dismal voter turnout in the last election at under 40 percent. It is a tragedy when there's a detachment, when there's a separation between the people, those that who are governed and those who govern. That's a problem. I mean, there has to be engagement there. But party members here are confident. I think Richard's proven he's a, he's a good person. He's not just in this for for some self-serving reasons. His to-do list is a long one. Health care, senior services, and attracting young voters sit at the top. But Starkey still has a way to go before filling Snellgrove's shoes, as Premier Redford has yet to call a provincial election. To federal politics now, residents of the Vegreville Wainwright constituency are getting their chance to put input into the federal budget. Caleb Buchanan caught up with area MP Leon Benoit to find out people's top concerns. MP Leon Benoit says they are the best way to discuss the issues important to the public. The feedback so far includes the reduction of government red tape, the Northern Gateway Pipeline, spending in the federal budget, and the hot topic right now, the Wheat Board. I feel it's a rights issue. Farmers put all the money into growing the grain. They put all the work into growing the grain. It's their property once they grow it. Why shouldn't they be able to market it you know, in any way they see fit? Following the lead of other MPs across the country, Benoit held a closed door meeting in Lloydminster, while all other meetings on the tour have been open. They have uh, had these closed door sessions, so it's with, mostly with uh, small business owners, uh, self-employed people, uh, because they can speak more freely. A public meeting is planned for Lloydminster next month. Benoit says although it's a long and ongoing process, all the information gathered will be sent to the finance minister right away. We know where we want to get, but it sure is necessary and helpful to ask uh, other people, Canadians right across the country, how they think we can best get there. If you are unable to attend any of the meetings this week, you can provide your feedback online at leonbenoit.ca.
Kayla Buchanan, New Cap News. Well, it's a partnership that's taken a few years to solidify, but the Elizabeth Métis Settlement and Habitat for Humanity will be working together. As Clayton Brown explains, it's the first time Habitat has ever worked with an Aboriginal community. The Elizabeth Métis Settlement Council and Habitat for Humanity have signed a groundbreaking deal in hopes it will fix what Councillor Chris Desjardins considers a housing crisis. Our younger people, especially just breaking out into workforce, single mothers, single families, they don't have the opportunity to qualify for mortgages and for loans. So then for us, we need to really look and address that. How do we provide housing for those that are unable to get a house out there? Aboriginal housing has been a real issue across Canada. And we've always felt that Habitat for Humanity was a housing solution. And it should fit on either settlement on reserve. This is the first time in Habitat for Humanity's history they will be building houses in an Aboriginal community. May have been a monumental step to get to this point, but Council knows it's only the beginning. What we're looking to do is really to empower our people, to create change in the mentality of our people, to give our people home ownership, to give them the responsibility of home ownership, and more than that, to give them an equity gain on Aboriginal soil. For Habitat, they saw this as a great opportunity and feel it will be successful. Bringing uh, home ownership to a community that hasn't had home ownership before is outside the box and you know change is often difficult and you know we think we can help uh, with the process and with the model. There will be eight new duplexes built in the first stage with plans for that number to only grow in the future. At Elizabeth Métis Settlement, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Shoppers in Lloyd Minster may have to look for alternatives tonight as the Lloyd Mall is closed until tomorrow morning. Mall management were informed of a water main break behind the building this morning, forcing the city to shut off water at 3 this afternoon. They assure us that everything will be back. It'll be fixed tonight, so we'll be back open tomorrow at 10 a.m. Schroeder thanks stores and customers for their patience and understanding. She says it's unfortunate that stores had to close tonight, but is hoping it doesn't mean any significant financial setback. Friday night tends to be busy, Thursday night, you know, but Saturday, at least we're going to be open tomorrow because Saturday is a very big day, so at least we're going to be back and running tomorrow, so it's all going to be good. Coming up, hitting the lanes for a good cause. Bull for kids' sake starts recruitment early. That story after the break.